Okay, so for filling the system up and then bleeding it, I'm gonna take the auxiliary belt off, uh, I'm gonna fill the reservoir, and then I'm gonna turn the power steering pump by hand. The idea behind this is that if we do it by hand, it's nowhere near as fast as if the engine was rotating it. And so it means that it's just slowly filling the fluid into the system and it's not pulling as much air into the system and the air that is already in the system gets pushed out um, you know, much easier than if you're doing it with the engine on and going left to right, left to right, because uh, that way it just takes ages to clear the air out of the system. So like I say, this way, it's kind of like priming the system. So we're gonna get as much fluid into there as we can. As soon as the fluid level stops uh, going down in the reservoir, at that point, we'll fully reassemble the car, uh, start the engine and then go left to right a few times uh, on the lock just to clear the last few bits of air out of the rack. <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to a job in a couple of days time that's got the same issue so I'm going to link footage from that with this. Yeah, I'll get some other footage of how it actually looks and sounds when it's leaking. Right, so this is the one that's leaking. So let's see what this sounds like. So the reason that's making noise is that it's pulling in air for every drop of fluid that comes out that gets replaced by air going into the system which then gets spun around the pump really fast and makes that horrible noise um so yeah that's if you get that noise you know what it is it's either a leak or a bad pump but it's usually a leak so this is the other way of fixing it if you don't want to replace the entire pipe which you can see this one is very very rusty and crusty which is why it's broken through but you can just install this sort of switchback pipe here. Comes with a couple of barbed ends, and then yeah, just jubile it on. Um, this was just on eBay, about 35 quid. Um, and it works, you know, it does what it needs to do. So I've got this 15 mil spanner that I've had a little there uh, side extension welded in the middle of it there, just so I can undo the, uh, the tension itself. And then there's a little pin that you can put in uh, if you can get to it. Uh, but I I tend to just struggle and do it without be able to take the belt off, and then that's it. So we need to take this cap off, which are always quite tight. So I find a spanner sat in there. It usually undoes it quite nicely. You go in a 19 mil, I think. Two hands makes this very easy. Okay, so you'll notice on here, a minimum, maximum. So I'm just going to keep filling it up and checking it. But essentially, we're waiting until it's gone a little bit over that sort of. I don't know what we're going to call that? That meshy mid layer there. Meshy mid layer. Not the official terminology for it, but it'll do. I'll try and demonstrate this. I'm going to try and put my phone up here to show that as I turn, so I leave my phone at that angle there, as I turn this manually, clockwise, the fluid level will start to drop. There you go. And I'm just going to keep repeating this process. So we're still above the mesh you made layer. Uh, but basically, like I say, the idea behind this is that we don't want to be sending aerated fluid around the system because it's just never going to get rid of the air. So we want to send it through slower so that the pump doesn't add as much air into it as it's going round. That's the theory and it seems to work quite well.
We can overfill it at this point because we know it's not going to be over full. We know we've still got a lot of system to fill. And so, yeah, I'm just going to keep repeating that process. Uh, until the level doesn't drop anymore and then I'll do the final assembly and that should be it uh, Just a quick one what I am going to do Change my mind slightly. Uh, I'm just going to leave the bottom uh, Intercooler piping off disconnect to the maths so of the car will run quite happily without that pipe there just means that if there is a leak uh, and I need to get it bits I can get it a little bit easier rather than having to then remove all that to get to it uh, not that I anticipate there will be a leak, but you know, just in case. So I'm going to start it up and then have a look. What's the verdict? Looks spot on to me. Again, looks fine to me. You'll notice that straight off the back there's no noise of air in the system. So I'm gonna go left to right, full lock. See how there was a slight bit of noise at full lock there. Only a slight bit there. If we now look at the fluid in the tank. You see there's a little bit of froth. Just a little bit, but not very much at all. So we're going to top this up, but that is why we pre-fill it, because uh, otherwise it just takes flipping ages, and then do it by hand. So, add a little bit more in. So I'll go left to right again. We'll see if there's any more air going to come out, but there's no air coming out on idle, so that's good. And then we're just gonna let it settle now. I'm gonna turn the system off, let it settle, but that is basically done. Uh, so yeah, um, there's gonna be other bits of footage that I'm gonna chuck in about the broken one. I'm not sure how that's gonna pan out. Uh, I'm not sure whether this will be the outro or that'll be the outro, I'm not sure. But I hope this has helped. Um, it's not that big a scary a job at all. You've just gotta, you know, take your time with it, uh, catch all the old fluid try and keep it from being a really messy job uh, and that's it cheers guys <laughs>